Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the International Euphonium Summit Living History Series. I'm your host, Nicholas Hofter von Heide, and today we have a special guest with us, Benjamin Horn. Welcome to your series and your journey and for the Living History Series, part of our foundation that we have here, an amazing cohort with over 11 countries and uh, four continents uh, that we're on as of October 23rd, 2023. Welcome. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Absolutely. Uh, as uh, For those that are aware, we have his page uh, will be live at the time of this video upload at international euphonium summit.com uh, uh, slash Benjamin dash horn. And we'll leave the link below. Make sure you, uh, like, subscribe, and we'll leave his channel up here uh, at the end of this video segment. So you can check out more on Benjamin Horn and see all the activities he is a part of to include uh, the Sacramento Mandarins, the uh, drum corps, and uh, all, all the cool projects that he's been a part of, including uh, a, a uh, 2B phoneme quartet. Uh, we'll leave all the links and all the details on that web, uh, web page linked below. So let's get started with uh, learning about your history and how you got brought up and I guess starting in Baltimore. Yeah, I guess my story begins. Uh, I was born in Baltimore, Maryland. And um, yeah, through there, I lived the first five years of, of my life there. Um, it's It's also very much the reason why when people ask, yes, I am a Baltimore sports fan. So if you're talking about the Orioles or the Ravens, I'm always down to talk about them and have my jerseys over over my room, always ready to go at any point. Okay, so um, quick question on that. Are you a Cal yeah. Ripken fan then? Yes. He's such a great ball player. Indeed. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, and then of course, yeah, since, since, uh, since we're on the subject, you know, throw a shout out to the Orioles having a great season and you know we're not going to talk about what happened in the playoffs but you know it having a great <laughs> <laughs> um and uh yeah so uh originally was born in Baltimore uh wasn't there for very long uh, but still a place that I have very strong connections to is as almost all of my entire family still lives there uh so it's been a frequent place that we go visit um for holidays and even uh my my dad and I it's, it's a tradition for for him and I to often go to a Ravens game every year unfortunately not this year because of my schedule um but and I think 2020 was the only other year we haven't gone I think in a long time well that, uh, that but, was when it was all closed off and they actually uh barred people I remember watching videos of uh, Baltimore, uh, the stadium around there, they had actually uh, closed the whole area off and didn't let anybody in. Yeah. Yeah, because of COVID and all of that. Yeah. But yeah, those are the only two years. This season and 2020 are the only two years we haven't been to a game um, going back to when I was a kid, right? Um, but that led to us going back there to Baltimore a lot. And I say going back because I grew up in and actually spent most of my life in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we moved there when I was five. And that really kind of kind of sets off sort of any musical journey. Um, I do have one anecdotal story. I remember uh, my mom, as she talks about now, that I remember when we were still living in Baltimore, I was in preschool, of course. And... I remember us doing a preschool production of the musical Annie, right? And I can say, number one, I remember that production vividly because my stage fright came into play for the very first time in my life. And I ended up not really doing much with that. But I remember liking the musical quite a bit. To the point that my mom will tell you that I knew every single word to every single part, every single note of how that musical went. And as I said, she jokes now that when when I started being able to do that, that's how she knew that I was going to end up being a musician because I loved Annie so much growing up. 
before that time. Um, but again, that didn't really lead to to too much of a musical life for me yet until we kind of got to Atlanta and and for me starting band in fourth grade. Um, my first instrument was trumpet. I think we only had the choice between like trumpet and trombone and 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 of course the woodwind instruments. But I think by that time I was already a little bit exposed to it. I have an older brother. He's about seven years older than me, but he was in high school at war. He was in middle school at this point. Um, but he was in band. Um aptly as our last name, my brother, his first brass instrument was the French horn, which I don't know who allowed him to do that, that being your first instrument and being so difficult, but that was his first instrument. Um, and eventually, I think by the time he got to high school, he did end up switching to euphonium. Wow, uh, that's so cool. He, which, through him, which is, is by that time, by the time I was in fourth grade, he was in high school and he was playing euphonium. So by that point, as a young kid in elementary school, I at least knew what a euphonium was because my older brother was playing in high school band. Um, so yeah, I started on trumpet in fourth grade and then come fifth grade, I got the, the great thing called braces, which automatically puts trumpet on hard mode in case it needed to be harder already. And that eventually led to me having to make a choice between continuing to suffer through playing trumpet for however long I would end up wearing braces, which I think I wore braces, I want to say for like two or three years. Uh, but to either suffer through that with all the different uh, stuff that they make you do that might make it easier, but also still doesn't really make it easier to play with braces or try to switch an instrument. So me, again, knowing what a euphonium was, ended up switching to euphonium. I think my my elementary school in fifth grade, I think they ended up buying one. Um, and so I ended up getting to play on like this brand new whatever, I think, three valve old or lacquer i don't remember the brand but there was a euphonium there so i got to start playing euphonium in fifth grade um and you know a little bit wow. a little bit of help there from my brother who was already playing the instrument at that time in high school so got a little bit of, of just early training and getting the start there and then that moved me into middle school and then uh middle school obviously now i'm already playing euphonium in sixth grade and then seventh grade um kind of beginning my 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 want to do more things uh in seventh grade my my brother at this point was in college and he he had started marching drum corps he started marching in teal sound um and i think for me at that point in time because outside of being in band, I was very much a, a kid that loved sports and very much loved playing sports and um, was very much one that was involved in all of the different things. Like I was playing basketball, I was playing baseball, I was playing, everyone plays a little bit of soccer or whatever. But I think the, by that point in middle school, the sport that I had really kind of grown accustomed to was baseball. And by that point, you know, I had become very, very serious in it. I was playing on travel teams and doing all of that stuff and, and getting very, very involved. Uh, so I say all this to bring up the point that I became a very competitive person. I became like that, like I'm not still a competitive person. I'm still a competitive person. Um, <laughs> You're so, the Sacramento Mandarins. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, this, this is all connecting. So seeing my brother March Drum Corps when I was in seventh grade, you know, and and being exposed to that world now, and and essentially the part of our musical world that can be a little bit competitive, marching band and and drum corps. And I add on to that too that the, the high school that my brother went to before he started marching drum corps was a relatively competitive one in Georgia. Um, so getting to see that I think was a real eye opener for me of music not just being like oh yeah you know you can play and music and make music with others and it's fun and it's cool but then also like oh you can do this too and it's kind of athletic and you can move around which for me being I an athlete type of person was like well it was was very like oh this this is cool you know and i think that was what really sparked me um, 
and, and, I, and I'm not not to say that the competitive aspect in itself, I think, uh, leading to me wanting to do more things in music, but I just think the whole spectacle that drum corps can be, I think, really attracted me to music much more than sitting in concert band at that time. So uh, I remember going to see my first shows. This would be about 2007. So I remember seeing the cadets that year in their show, which was this, I believe. The show they had a lot of talking in. Oh, this is the basics blog and all that stuff. And I remember seeing Carolina Crown. That was their horse show that year. Um, and then, of course, my brother and then Teal Sound and their show. And, and, and Teal Sound, I remember that year, I believe they finished third in in what used to be division two but is now considered open class um and um so watching all of that happen and seeing the spectacle of that and then seeing i guess kind of the athletic nature of that really really um, inspired me but i think also furthermore all of us being brass players that are probably watching this the fear power of sound of hearing a drum corps for the first time you know and that and honest honestly like really changed things for me and that really inspired me to not only like keep playing and try to get more serious with the, with the instrument so that i can maybe march someday which i eventually do but to also uh it got me interested in how okay how do i make that sound happen not just me playing the instrument, but as a composer, I started getting really interested in the construction of, okay, so how's, how does a horn line make loud sounds and it sound in tune? And that, that was the start of me, um, at this point, again, being exposed to drum corps. I remember also being exposed to stuff like Blast and their videos and performances too. So I started listening to shows and I started transcribing them by ear. I got like a really early version of like Finale Notepad and whatever. And that, this was the beginning of that. It was listening to drum corps and me being like, oh, that sounds really, really cool. I at least know how euphonium and trombone, how those notes look on the page. So I kind of figured out how, and I knew how trumpet notes looked on the page because I played trumpet. Horn was a different animal, but, you know, and tuba I could figure out. But like, that was the beginning of me kind of figuring out initially kind of how to write music. Um, just because, yeah, I would literally go on YouTube, early YouTube, and look up shows or even blast videos, I remember, and would try to transcribe them by ear. What did your mom think when you were doing all that? Did you share that with her or or with your dad? That's an excellent question. Or with your brother? I do remember sharing it with my brother. And, and, and my brother's like, oh, wow. That's really cool. I think I think all of them were like, "Oh wow, that's really cool that you're doing that." They're really supportive of it. So my brother what, joked so, about now that when he saw me starting to do those things, he was like, "Oh wow, I I influenced this to happen." <laughs> so was he also um, a section leader in high school uh, and uh, college when you're just starting out band? Yeah. So my brother in when in high school he was a section leader. I think he was eventually like band president or whatever. Wow, that's cool. school band. And then in college, he was eventually drum major. He went to wow. Boston School. And then at Teal Sound, he was eventually section leader and horn sergeant there. And then um, getting later to when I would eventually march, he was on staff. He was on the administration staff. That's incredible. So I, I want to go back here. Are your parents musical? Oh, no. <laughs> what, what about your grandparents? Um... Not Any family a members. Lot, not a whole lot. I mean, I know that uh, I I found this out a little bit more in detail after he recently passed away earlier this year. But my grandfather was was a little bit more of a on my mom's side. He was a little bit more of a musician. He could play piano, I think, and he was a really good dancer. So I've heard, but I didn't get to see a lot of that when I was growing up. Um, mainly because of the fact that, as I said, we moved to Atlanta when I was three. So. But almost all of my extended family still lived in Baltimore. So I'd only see them maybe once a year for a few days or maybe one day a year. So I think a lot of those connections were were lost a little bit. But I do remember hear, hearing about, especially closer to the end of his life, that my grandfather on my mom's side was definitely, definitely had some musical skills. 
uh, and, and I think maybe some other people that I've heard about some other cousins that have had some musical skills, but not directly like my parents. No, just, just my older brother was the only, I guess, other musician in the family. Wow, that's incredible. That's a great way. I mean, we're not even into eighth grade just yet, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're still so, in seventh grade. Okay, <laughs> we're we're going to. Uh, I think that's a great way to segue because that leads. It sounds like that leads into prepping for marching band in high school, and that's going eighth grade really rolls very well into kind of transitioning into those high school years that competitive range right there as well as your brother on the flip side of that and just really cool I think I, it was such a natural pause right there I, th I think that's where we're going to end this chapter I, I think that's a really good I, I've got I'm really blown away with the story as with each of our cohorts and for those that are watching this, be sure to subscribe and like to his channel that will be appearing up here soon, as well as follow more in his series here on the Living History Series at internationallyphonemesummit.com slash Benjamin dash horn links down below. And until next time, everyone. Um, oh, before I forget, when this is posted. Is there going to be a live stream for that concert this Friday at Michigan State? I believe so. Okay. I'll put that uh, on the social media as well as on perhaps his actual page at internationallyphonemesummit.com slash Benjamin Dash Horn. Uh, and I'm sure he'll have that link on his page, which will be linked on his page uh, there. So, uh just yeah heads up on that and we'll catch up with uh benjamin next time for his second in series going from eighth grade on up till we find the next end of that chapter until next time everyone thanks so much for stopping by take care now <laughs>